So now in this final video of this first half of the lecture on classification, we're going to be looking at some final broad points uh, in terms of what classification really means. And we'll entitle this last classification flowchart as classification Roman numeral 3. So let's write that down. Classification Roman numeral 1, 2, 3. And so there are three main points I want to go over, very brief points to sum up and finish the idea of classification to start off our Bio 116 journey. Classification is rooted on this idea, much like everything in biology, on evolution. Evolution is the key question in almost any biological study that we look at. First and foremost, since it's been a long time since we mentioned evolution, let's look at a general definition of what evolution is. And so I'm going to whittle down this incredible and very broad, very expansive concept onto these couple of words in this definition. Evolution is simply uh, the accumulation of genetic change over time. And that is a definition that I hope is not confusing, and I hope that you can say firmly, yes, of course, evolution is the accumulation of genetic change over time. It's a very, very powerful, very simple definition to cover a broad and expansive topic such as evolution. And a little bit more detail, we can state that evolution, though it's an accumulation of genetic change over time, more specifically involves changes in AFs, which stands for allele frequencies, if you remember, changes in allele frequencies in populations and not in individuals. Not individuals. Okay? So populations evolve through changes in allele frequencies, not changes in individual at the individual level. That's not how evolution works. How does evolution work? Well, evolution works through a fancy, beautiful mechanism that we, again, went over in great detail, but let's remind ourselves the mechanism of evolution is, of course, going to be our good friend, natural selection. NS, which stands for natural selection, and we can briefly state, though that this is the mechanism of evolution, we want to further state that natural selection, this is what acts on individuals, aka if you are more successful than somebody else because of a trait that you have that gives you an advantage over somebody else's poorer trait, let's say, you will be naturally, let's say, selected to pass on your genes. Your genes will pass on as a result of that. So that's why it acts on the individual. And it thus, because it's selecting your trait, it affects variation uh, very, very much so. It affects what is more common, what is less common, what is successful, what is not successful, intimately tied to the environment. Um, all of those details are very important to re-mention because classification is a concept that's embedded and rooted on evolutionary tones and themes throughout. So that covers our basic uh, evolution uh, 101 that we have uh, in terms of understanding classification. Classification also is important because it helps us understand biological diversity. That is a very, again, broad, expansive topic that all we're going to state is the idea of the total collection. This is what biological diversity is, the total collection of all living organisms. Simple as that. And that's all you need to know in terms of what biological diversity is and how can we look at this expansive and broad collection. Well, we use classification techniques like taxonomy, like systematics, like phylogeny, like binomial nomenclature, etc. That's why we learned them, and now we can apply them to this total collection of biological diversity as seen on Earth. And finally, last concept of classification to understand is the great almighty tree of life in biology. This is a three domain system of classification. Very famous, very important uh, to understand and we're going to be looking at this system uh, in 
great detail all throughout Biology 116, um, all the way from things that are even non-living, which we'll do in this lecture, from the viruses to the most complex of systems that we see within our own human bodies, all fall under the three-domain system of classification. And this is something you're probably familiar with, something we touched upon prior in Biology 115 here and there, but just to reiterate, our three-domain system includes archaea, it includes bacteria, and again, we'll go over these in great detail as we go through Biology 116, and it also includes the domain eukarya. And uh, um, this is the same thing as saying eukaryotes, but we're just going to say eukarya because that's the uh, technical way of utilizing the domain name necessary. Final point of this idea of classification, the tree of life, is that archaea and bacteria are similar. Why are they similar? They are both, and they both fall under the idea of being prokaryotes. Do not forget that. So they are part of the prokaryotes. We are part of the eukaryotes. Final thing to understand about classification, I highly suggest looking at figure 26.21. This is a great summary of much of what we looked at and much of what we will look at in Biology 116. Do not memorize it. Just look at it and understand the idea of the three-domain system that it presents very nicely.